Start of Chapter 3 Further Proofs Ishmael the Firstborn Since the Domini was helplessly agreeing with every point, I said, Domini, so far what I have done is to prove only one point out of the whole prophecy, that is proving the phrase, like unto thee, like you, like Moses. The prophecy is much more than this single phrase, which reads as follows, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. The emphasis is on the words, from among their brethren. Moses and his people, the Jews, are here addressed as a racial entity, and as such their brethren undoubtedly be the Arabs. You see, the Holy Bible speaks of Abraham as the friend of God. Abraham had two wives, Sarah and Hagar. And Abraham called his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. Genesis 16.15 And Abraham took Ishmael his son. Genesis 17.23 And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Genesis 17.25 Up to the age of thirteen, Ishmael was the only son and seed of Abraham when the covenant was ratified between God and Abraham. God grants Abraham another son through Sarah, named Isaac, who was very much the junior to his brother Ishmael. Arabs and Jews If Ishmael and Isaac are the sons of the same father Abraham, then they are brothers. And so the children of the one are the brethren of the children of the other. The children of Isaac are the Jews and the children of Ishmael are the Arabs. So they are brethren to one another. The Bible affirms, And he, Ishmael, shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Genesis 16.12 And he, Ishmael, died in the presence of all his brethren. Genesis 25.18 the children of Isaac are the brethren of the Ishmaelites. In like manner, Muhammad is from among the brethren of the Israelites because he was a descendant of Ishmael, the son of Abraham. This is exactly as the prophecy has it, from among their brethren, Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. There the prophecy distinctly mentions that the coming prophet, who would be like Moses, must arise not from the children of Israel or from among themselves, but from among the brethren. Muhammad therefore was from among their brethren. Words in the Mouth The prophecy proceeds further, and I will put my words into his mouth. What does it mean when it is said, I will put my words in your mouth? You see, when I asked you, the Domini, to open Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, at the beginning, and if I had asked you to read, and if you had read, would I be putting my words into your mouth? The Domini answered, No. But I continued, If I were to teach you a language like Arabic, about which you have no knowledge, and if I asked you to read or repeat after me what I uttered, that is, Qul huwallahu ahad Say, He is Allah, the one and only. Allahu samad Allah, the eternal absolute. Lam yalid Walam yulad, he begetteth not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kuhuban ahad, and there is none like unto him. Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, verses 1 to 4. Would I not be putting these unheard words of a foreign tongue which you utter into your mouth? The Domini agreed that it was indeed so. In an identical manner, I said, the words of the Holy Qur'an, the revelation vouchsafed by the Almighty God to Muhammad were revealed. History tells us that Muhammad was 40 years of age. He was in a cave some three miles north of the city of Mecca. It was the 27th night of the Muslim month of Ramadan. In the cave, the Archangel Gabriel commands him in his mother tongue, Iqra, which means read or proclaim or recite. Muhammad is terrified and in his bewilderment replies, Ma'ana biqari'in, which means, I am not learned. The angel commands him a second time with the same result. For the third time, the angel continues, 
اقرا بسم ربك الذي خلق now muhammad grasps that what was required of him was to repeat to rehearse and he repeats the words as they were put into his mouth اقرا بسم ربك الذي خلق read in the name of thy lord and cherisher who created خلق الانسان من علق created man from a mere clot of congealed blood iqra wa rabbuk al akram read and thy lord is most bountiful allazi 'allama bil qalam he who taught the use of the pen 'allama al insana ma lam ya'lam taught man that which he knew not surah alaq chapter 96 verses 1 to 5 These are the first five verses which were revealed to Muhammad which now occupy the beginning of the 96th chapter of the Holy Quran The Faithful Witness Immediately the angel had departed Muhammad rushed to his home terrified and sweating all over he asked his beloved wife Khadija to cover him he lay down and she watched by him when he had regained his composure He explained to her what he had seen and heard. She assured him of her faith in him and that Allah would not allow such a terrible thing to happen to him. Are these the confessions of an impostor? Would impostors confess that when an angel of the Lord confronts them with a message from on high, they get fear-stricken, terrified, and sweating all over, run home to their wives? Any critic can see that his reactions and confessions are that of an honest man, sincere man. the man of truth al amin the honest the upright the truthful during the next 23 years of his prophetic life words were put into his mouth and he uttered them they made an indelible impression on his heart and mind and as the volume of the sacred scripture holy quran grew they were recorded on palm leaf fiber on skins and on the shoulder blades of animals and in the hearts of his devoted disciples before his demise these words were arranged in the order in which we find them today in the holy quran the words revelation were actually put into his mouth exactly as foretold in the prophecy under discussion and i will put my words in his mouth holy bible deuteronomy 18 18 unlettered prophet Muhammad's experience in the cave of Hira later to be known as Jabal An-Nur the mountain of light and his response to the first revelation is the exact fulfillment of another biblical prophecy In the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12 we read and the book al-kitab al-Qur'an the reading the recitation is delivered to him that is not learned An-Nabiyul Ummi the unlettered prophet holy quran chapter 7 verse 158 saying read this i pray thee the words pray thee are not in the hebrew manuscripts compared with the roman catholic's two way version and also with the revised standard versions and he saith i am not learned i am not learned is the exact translation of the words ma ana biqari'in which words Muhammad uttered twice to the Holy Ghost the archangel Gabriel when he was commanded iqra read let me quote the verse in full without a break as found in the king james version or the authorized version as it is more popular known and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he saith i am not learned holy bible Isaiah 29:12 It may be noted that there were no Arabic Bibles in existence in the 6th century of the Christian era when Muhammad lived and preached besides he was absolutely unlettered and unlearned no human had ever taught him a word his teacher was a creator Wama yantiqu 'anil hawa he does not speak out of his own desire in huwa illa wahyun yuha it is no less than inspiration sent down to him allamahu shadidul quwa he was taught by one mighty in power surah najm 
chapter 53, verse 3 to 5. Without any human learning, he put to shame the wisdom of the learned. Grave warning. See, I told the Domini, how the prophecies fit Muhammad like a glove. We do not have to stretch prophecies to justify their fulfillment in Muhammad. The Domini replied, All your expositions sound very well, but they are of no real consequence, because we Christians have Jesus Christ, the incarnate God, who has redeemed us from the bondage of sin. I asked, Not important? God didn't think so. He went to a great deal of trouble to have his warnings recorded. God knew that there would be people like you who will flippantly, light-heartedly discount his words. So he followed up Deuteronomy 18.18 18 with a dire warning. The very next verse. And it shall come to pass, it is going to happen, that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. In the Catholic Bible, the ending words are, I will be the revenger. I will take vengeance from him. I will take revenge. Does not this terrify you? God Almighty is threatening revenge. We shake in our pants if some hoodlums threaten us. Yet you have no fear of God's warning. Miracle of miracles. In the verse 19 of Deuteronomy chapter 18, we have a further fulfillment of the prophecy in Muhammad. Note the words, my words which he shall speak in my name. In whose name is Muhammad speaking? I open the Holy Quran, Alama Yusuf Ali's translation at chapter 114, Surah Nas, or Mankind, the last chapter, and showed him the formula at the head of the chapter. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And the meaning, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, and the heading of chapter 113, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And the meaning, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. And every chapter downwards, 112, 111, 110, was the same formula and the same meaning on every page. Because the end surahs, chapters, are short and take about a page each. And what did the prophecy demand? Which he shall speak in my name. And in whose name does Muhammad speak? In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. The prophecy is being fulfilled in Muhammad to the letter. Every chapter of the Holy Quran except the ninth begin with the formula Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. The Muslim begins his every lawful act with the holy formula, but the Christian begins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Concerning Deuteronomy chapter 18, I have given you more than 15 reasons as to how this prophecy refers to Muhammad and not to Jesus. End of chapter 3